Hello, my name is Glenn Kapani and I work for Independent Arts as a practitioner. Um, during lockdown, it's been a bit difficult to uh, get to people, so I've been asked to do this uh, writing workshop. Um, I mostly write songs, I've been writing songs for about 30 years, but I also write poetry and stories, uh, and I've just finished a book. So I thought, what, what could we do um, for, this, for this writing workshop? Uh, and recently, a lot has been happening in America, um, and during the inauguration of uh, President Biden, there was a fantastic poem that I saw by uh, a woman called Amanda Gorman, who is the Poet Laureate for the National Youth Poet Laureate in America. Now, I thought it was a very, very inspiring poem. So I thought we could write something, a poem or a song or a short story based on uh, a current event, something that you find um, important to you, something that you're, you're passionate about. So I, I've written some of these, uh, I've written songs and poems that I, I find that I'm passionate about. So I'm going to uh, be reciting some of those. I'm going to, one's a poem and one's a song. So I'm going to sing one and, uh, and recite the other. Um, but so the first thing to do is that really you need to stop this and uh, go on YouTube and look up Amanda Gordon, uh, Amanda Gorman. Um, and there's two pieces of work that we're going to look at. And the first one is The Hill We Climb. And that is uh, the poem that she, she recited at the inauguration. And the other one is called Earthrise. Um, and that one is about climate change and about looking after our planet. So go to YouTube, look for Amanda Gorman, G-O-R-M-A-N, and look up The Hill We Climb and Earthrise. And then I'll see you after that. Okay, so I hope you looked at those uh, and I hope you found them inspiring. Um, from those two poems, I was just going to look uh, at a, a little section from each of them. And uh, this is kind of thing, a, a bit that stuck out for me. And this one is from The Hill We Climb. Um, so it's just a short section from that. We lay down our arms so we can reach out our arms to one another. We seek harm to none and harmony for all. Let the globe if nothing else, say this is true, that even as we grieved, we grew, that even as we hurt, we hoped, that even as we tired, we tried, that we'll forever be tied together victorious, not because we will never again know defeat, but because we will never again sow division. So I thought that was really... The whole, power, the whole poem is a very powerful piece. Uh, that little bit stuck out for me. The use of arms and arms, so talking about weapons and then holding out our arms. We seek harm to no one and harmony for all. I thought that was a really good, uh, clever use of, of, um, of wordplay there. <clears throat> and very inspiring very getting to the, the heart of the matter straight away, getting to the core of the matter, getting all the emotion in, but also in a, quite a simple, in simple language. Um, yeah, yeah. And using that alliteration, that even as we grieved, we grew, we hurt, we hoped, we tired, we tried. It's a good, it's a good trick to sort of... Um, get people listening and get pay, paying attention. Okay, so from Earthrise, this is, uh, this is the beginning of Earthrise. So hopefully you've listened to that and I'm just going to go through that. On Christmas Eve 1968, astronaut Bill Anders snapped a photo of the Earth as Apollo 8 orbited the moon. Those three guys were surprised to see, to see from their eyes 
our planet looked like an earth rise, a blue orb hovering over the moon's grey horizon with deep oceans and silver skies. It was our world's first glance at itself, our first chance to see a shared reality, a declared stance and a commonality, a glimpse into our planet's mirror, and as threats drew nearer, our own urgency became clearer, as we realized that we hold nothing dearer than this floating body we call home. So she's looked at a, a moment in history, the, this great photograph of the Earth rising above the moon. Um, uh, so it's called Earthrise, very famous photograph. And she's taken that very iconic image and expressed it incredibly well, those feelings that a lot of people had of seeing our planet from a distance from the first time to see the whole thing. But she's also related it to what's going on now through climate change um, and in all the, a lot of the environment, in, environmental issues that are having a, an impact on the planet, that we need to look after those planet, this planet. So she's tied those two things together. Okay, so it's a, an iconic image and, an, and a very important issue that's happening at the moment. And she's put those two things together uh, and started her poem like that. So there's various <coughs> ways we can that uh, when you're writing, things you can use to, to help your writing. So hopefully you're going to have a go at this. You're going to have a go. You're going to pick something, pick a topic that you, you, you want to write on, something that you find really important, and have a go at writing it. So that's the first thing. Um, picking a subject. So... Think about something that is important to you at the moment. What is it that, that you think is going to be important for the future? What is a big thing that happen, is happening at the moment? could be an, an historical event or, or, or a political issue or a social issue. But make sure that when you write a poem that it, or, or a song that you're writing about something that is important to you because then that will... Be, that will transfer to whoever's listening to you and they will see, they will sense that importance and then the passion will come through as well. So um, writing from the heart, that's what, I, that's what I try to do. I think all the best writing um, really comes from the heart. So look at that, look at what's important to you. Try and write from the heart, get a real kind of emotional feel for something uh, and that's the first thing you need to do so pick that subject pick pick what subject you're gonna you're gonna write on and then do some research on that on that subject see if you can find something online see if you can find books about it see if you can talk to people about it if it's climate change there's an awful lot online there's a lot of speeches uh, Greta Thunberg is a, a great advocate for uh, for looking after our planet, and of course she's she yeah, she's very young and she started off very young and she's a very inspiring person. So a lot of Greta Thunberg's speeches are online if that's what you want to write about. Um, so do a little of research about it and try and find out as much as you can about that that issue. Um, then once you've done that, think about what sort of style you want to, to write in. When you look at uh, um, Amanda Gorman's work, you can see that there's a cultural, there's cultural influences uh, in her work. There's, um, she's, her, her, the issues that she, she, that she writes about, um, a lot of it is including her, her ties with Africa, that, she, that her, her origins are from Africa. And you can hear that and there's a rhythm to, to her poetry. But also from 
uh, Afro-American music, there's an influence of rap, rap music going on there as well. Um, it's quite a mild influence, but it, it's definitely, you can hear it. Um, there's a rhythm to what she's saying. So make sure you, you pick a style that you like, that you enjoy. Um, then, and maybe something that matches what you're talking about. So if you're talking about something that, you're, that you find passionate, important and important, uh, I think rap style is, is, a good, is a good way of putting it. Um, simple rhymes um, and sort of short sentences and they, they, can, they can be very effective but it doesn't need to be like that you could if you write if you play piano you could write some piano music um, or if you play guitar I play guitar um, or if you know somebody who who plays an instrument then they can help you as well so look around you who do you know and think about the style. What music do you like to listen to? And then you can, that's, that's the, that tends to be the easiest one to go along with. Okay, so once you've, once you've picked your subject, you've had a good look at that subject, you've thought about the style, maybe now's the time to get some ideas down on paper. And I find, personally, the best way to do this is just write everything down that I'm thinking. Let it all come. It's what's called a stream of consciousness. And just let those ideas flow. It doesn't have to make any sense at the beginning, but just, just write and write and write. And what will happen in your writing is that you will find little phrases stick out. And then you can use those little phrases you can put them together to form um, to form your poem or your song. So I find that is a really good, especially if you've got a, a complicated subject like climate change, where lots of people have lots of different opinions and a lot of the information around it is very dry, it's very factual. Um, it's not, a, not necessarily an easy subject to write on. So just what you want to do in a song or a poem is have phrases that, that stick out um, or paragraphs that, that are really um, powerful. So just write and write and write. When you've kind of written everything, then you can start to look over that and pick out the things that, that, that just stand out to you. Okay. Um, so when you've done that, you've written it all down, then you can start on your actual work. This is, a, this is my way of doing it. Maybe you will have a different way of doing it, um, but I'm just giving you one way of doing it. Maybe you'll write your poem all in one and you'll be really happy with that and it will just come out uh, in one go and that'll be, that'll be it and that'll be great. But that's not always how it works, but sometimes that is how it works. Um, so start if you're writing if you've got all your ideas and you start to write them down and pick them out and see what what what's good um, and get rid of anything that shouldn't be there that's a really useful tip when it comes to writing poems or writing songs get rid of anything that you don't need anything that's superfluous anything that's just too much uh, too many words try and cut them out as much as you can and just pare down to what is the simplest message you can get. Um, if you're thinking about a song it, uh, or poem, then rhyming can, is, is, can be a, a very important thing. And it can be a very powerful thing as well. So pick your rhymes really well. Um, and that, that, can, that, can work, that can work in a, a really great way. Um, so maybe you've got your, your notes and then you've got your first version. Maybe then you want to take it to someone else, try it out on them, what do they think, and listen to them and maybe take their advice because it can really, that, that can really help as well. And don't be afraid to change everything or lose a, lose a bit if, you don't, if it doesn't quite fit. Don't hang on to it, just let it go because um, in the end you, your, so your song or your piece of work will be, will be a better piece of work. Um, 
So keep going and refining it and making it better and adding little touches. Um, you don't have to complete your work in one day or, or, or an hour. You know, it can take a week sometimes. Leave it to one side, come back to it, try it out with somebody else, see how it looks. And then once it's done, you practice it. Um, you practice in front of a mirror or on a computer or what I'm doing, recording it, and then go for a performance. And the performance can be a really amazing part of it. As you saw with Amanda Gorman, you know, she uses her hands in a very simple way to, uh, with these gestures. And that really adds to it. And you can see how her performance of it, her style, really matches the, the poem really well. So for a lot of people, a lot of poems, a lot of poets, a lot of songwriters, the performance is especially important, especially with poetry, because you don't have an instrument, you don't have music to rely on. So uh, that performance of it is really quite a big thing for, for, for a lot of poets. Um, so again, think about how you want to project it, how you feel about it, and uh, the more you practice it, the more expression you get into it, uh, the more you will engage an audience. So try and make your words clear. That's really important. It's so important that people can hear what you are saying, that they can hear the words and it's clear. So keep your head up, um, keep, your mouth, keep your mouth and tongue going wide open and make sure it's clear and if you if you if you can put some more expression into it as well okay so that's basically it really from from i would say just have a go at it uh see how it comes out and i'm going to uh i'm going to recite one of my poems and then i'm going to uh, do a song as well and this one's called as mr jones goes by and this was something I wrote for a, uh, a workshop that I was running, and this was about environment, environmental issues. So I thought and thought long about this. I wasn't quite sure where to come from, and, event, and I had lots and lots of ideas, and I, I went through that process. I wrote them all down and picked them out. And um, in this, there was a theme of an orchestra playing, and I like that theme, so that runs through. But there's also this character called Mr. Jones, who's uh, who's just uh, like an everyman. He's Mr. Mr. Normal, and he's going through life, throwing rubbish around. Um, so he's it's kind of based on him, uh, based on that character. Okay, as Mr. Jones go by, goes by, on a bluish coloured marble floating somewhere deep in space. There's a lot of lost and lonely creatures called the human race. And though they scurry back and forth by train and plane and car, they never really seem to know exactly where they are. The lights go down. The orchestra breathes in. Temptation from the rising violins. A hush descends. You will not hear the dropping of a pin. The conductor waves his baton. And the symphony begins. A piccolo chirps the rhythm, and the flute she plays her part. Dawn chorus in the woods on scurried feet and beating heart. And every creature knows the song, be fed or be fed upon. And the hunter ne'er thinks twice in nature's vicious paradise. The ancient spider weaves her web of subtle strands and sticky thread, each one dependent on the others to keep it strong. The sun beats down like a kettle drum, the river rich with cellos hum, the harp's cascading waterfall, the buzzard high with lonely call, and rich the earth with crawling things, while Mother Nature softly rings. The woodland scene is now complete. The forest fruits are soft and sweet. While just a mile away, a damp and hungry fox watches, watches Mr. Jones drive by in a little metal box. His radio is blaring and his shoes are soaking wet and he spills his Costa coffee as he lights his cigarette. And he never even notices the rabbit in the way, just a thump, a bump, 
and Mr. Jones continues on his way. But the symphony is lifting as the sun is climbing high and the notes they rise and fall, but Mr. Jones, he just drives by. With a cloud of grey above him and a cloud of grey behind, he has to be productive and he cannot waste his time. He winds down his window, but the wind he does not feel as he evacuates the plastic wrapper from his breakfast meal. Sparrows chitter-chatter, bees buzz round a blooming rose, and the bits of bunny on the road are pecked at by the crows. That's how it goes, I suppose. That's the rhythm, that's the beat, from our birth upon the earth to our death and life complete. We, la we live, we laugh, we dance, we die, consuming all we see and we rarely stop to wonder what it really means to be. Content to drift along now over yellow, green and brown, across the field, houses popping, here and there a town, then more roads, more houses, more shops and more cafes, traffic backed up city centres, smoggy motorways, smoke and dirt and concrete plastic people killing time accumulating separating what is yours and mine a billion souls full of holes with their eyes to the ground and the double bass is pounding a cacophony of sound and the rhythm races round the world carrying its seed to fertilize and feed all the consumers and their greed TV watchers stare at their screens with empty faces, while every day the war machine consumes our holy places. And I look around, and all I want to do is grieve. And I look around, and I can hardly breathe. Mr. Jones is passing by with his radio too loud, while in the sky a symphony of pink and golden cloud. A dawn chorus so beautiful enough to make you weep. But Mr. Jones is always, always, always fast asleep. Now the movement is ending in a vast ecstatic chord. The orchestra has come to rest and the audience is floored. Mr. Jones on his mobile phone complains that he is bored. The conductor takes a bow and the audience applaud. On a bluish coloured marble floating somewhere deep in space, there's a lot of lost and lonely creatures called the human race. And though they scurry back and forth by train and plane and car, they never really seem to know exactly where they are. Okay, so that's something I wrote for, um, for, for a climate change workshop. Uh, and the other thing I have is... Um, a song that I wrote quite a while ago called Turning of the Tide. Oh, love is gentle and love is kind And to each fault will pay no mind For in each heart will love reside And so we wait for the turning of the tide All things they come All things they go The seasons turn And this we know The twilight falls But dawn she cries We will wait For the turning of the tide And to the ghosts of empires past who on the ground dark shadows cast but from the darkness we will not hide but we will wait for the turning of the tide all oh, things they come all oh, things they go the seasons turn and this we know the twilight falls but dawn she cries We will wait For the turning of the tide Such men of craft If they have means Will spin their threads In hollow dreams Sweet words are laced 
with jealous pride. And so we wait for the turning of the tide. All things they come, all things they go. The seasons turn, and this we know. The twilight falls, but dawn she cries. We will wait for the turning of the tide. The seed is sown, all children one, from Mother Earth toward the sun. We understand, and so abide, and we will wait for the turning of the tide. All things they come, all things they go, the seasons turn, and this we know. The twilight falls, but dawn she cries. We will wait for the turning of the tide. For the turning of the tide For the turning of the tide So that was written about a moment it could be almost about anything really about uh, anything that happens that is wrong or dark and you feel like it's just you're stuck in something then you're waiting for the turning of the tide, you're waiting for things to change and things to, to get better, uh, as they always do. So, of course, the other thing that's going on that we all know about is COVID-19. So that might be a, a, a really interesting um, topic to, to think about, something you could really concentrate on and really that has affected all of us. So, so there's lots of topics out there. So get writing. And uh, send your stuff in. Uh, keep in touch with Independent Arts and we'll see if we can get some of them maybe up on the, uh, the Independent Arts YouTube channel uh, and get it out there so that other people can see it as well. So enjoy it. Enjoy what, what you're doing. I hope you've enjoyed this, this video and I hope you found it helpful. And, uh, and good luck. Okay, bye. <laughs>